Hey, I'm Mark Stevens, author of Government Dad website, markstevens.net. Got a quick video here. It's very rare that I get a response to the motion to dismiss. Uh, even more rare for one of the parking officials to do it. And uh, usually it's just, a, you know, denied with no explanation. Because, of course, when the motion to dismiss is based on a lack of evidence proving your constitution and code apply, and you have no evidence, all you can do is just ignore it or just you know, say denied. Uh, what was surprising at, from this parking uh, was that it was so detailed. Um, not arguments or claims that we haven't heard before, but uh, still I thought it was worth to go through and show just in case you encounter some of these things so you know how to respond to this kind of this, this trash. So um, it, it, it's the same usual stuff. It's full of fallacies, no evidence, but uh, still fun and worthwhile to debunk. So just in case you, you encounter this in court or out of court, somebody who's just a statist and is arguing this particular, these particular points, you'll have a much better idea if, if you didn't know already how to address these and to debunk that crap. So, uh, again, this is supposed to be in response to the question. Again, this is in court, by the way. It's supposed to be in response to the question, what evidence do you rely on proving your constitution applies to me just because I'm physically in California? So, what it starts with, you are implied, or if you prefer tacit consent, to the authority established by local, state, and federal governments shows me that the Constitution of California and the United States of America applies to you. Well, let's look at the evidence. Constitutions are just written instruments. They're not magical. They did not come from Zeus. Didn't come from Odin. Sorry, JT. Um, and here, when you say things like that, implied or tacit consent, oh, um, you're just making an assumption. Uh, he doesn't have a single fact to support that. Um, not a single fact. It's another example of the proof by, a foul, but proof by assertion fallacy. It's also begging the question because he's got no damn evidence. Uh, in court, you would want to say objection assumes facts not in evidence and it's argumentative. Uh, you can also object on grounds that it's speculation because he really is speculating or just guessing, uh, you know, saying it, that you agree to it. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, and you can agree to have the mafia run your neighborhood or the Yakuza. So, uh, wow. But I'll show more below, but uh, we know that support is compulsory. You pay or you go to jail. Um, there is no rational d discussion on that. You pay or go to jail, or they kill you in the process. So, and they take all your stuff. So, the claim that it's by consent is just dead wrong. Dead wrong. Um, so he says here, have you paid any local taxes, all types of sale taxes, state slash federal income taxes, excise taxes, paid to get your driver's license, marriage license, personal or real property taxes, license a pet, Drive on state or federal highways. Yep, got my roads. Buy a firearm in California, which is permit and background check. Call the fire or police department for help. Use a county service or hospital. Get a fishing license. Hunting license. Should be a vegan. Shouldn't be uh, fishing or hunting anyway. But uh, register your vehicles with the state. Have you benefited from the county's vector control, from the city's sewer service, sanitation service, or well, waterworks? Well, taxes, as we know, and I recommend if you haven't read Lysander Spooner, do it today. Uh, read his No Trees in the Constitution, No Authority. He does an awesome job dispelling this, this particular fallacy. Uh, taxation is just a euphemism for forcing strangers to give you money. That's it. That's it. It's just that people called government are able to get away with it. Uh, but it's nothing more than robbery. Uh, you're taking money or property under threat of jail. Makes you a criminal, not a government. Uh, that's not consent, no matter how many times you assert it. And you'll notice our parking bureaucrat makes no attempt at showing exactly how or why being forced to pay people under threat of jail somehow proves two written instruments no one bothered to sign actually applies to anybody and creates an obligation. See, bureaucrats and their apologists, they don't like discussing exactly what their constitutional constitutions are because they lose their magical quality. All of a sudden, they don't really seem to come from Zeus. Ah, the roads. What I say is the status equivalent to a meat eater saying, but bacon, when confronted with the absolute futility of their argument or position. How are the roads built? We all know this. It's money taken under threat of jail. And how does using the roads then prove two written instruments no one bothered to sign applies? 
There's no explanation for that because it's non sequitur. It doesn't, the, the two are completely unrelated. So that's why the bureaucrat here makes no attempt to connect the two because forcing people to pay you does not create obligations on them. Let's look at the psychological manipulation. All the benefits, all of them have been provided at the hand of the victims. We're all terrorized into compliance, and if you think terrorist, terror, being terrorized is, uh, I, I, is hyperbole, imagine you get a letter from the IRS. You know that feeling you just got? That's being terrorized into compliance. See, and it's because of the compliance that the abusers, the so-called authorities, get tremendous amounts of money. In California alone, I have in the article, they stole $158 billion on, and that's on budget. That does not include the, the billions taken uh, by uh, forfeiture, so-called forfeiture, that theft. See, then the stolen money is then used to provide benefits to the victims. This is, this is sick. So I wrote about this in, in Government Indicted, which you can get at markstevens.net. Um, evidence that a, a written instrument from 100 years ago applies to you just because you're physically in California. And the answer is, have you ever used the roads? Wow. Ever call the firemen? Well, you have a monopoly on those things, which is at gunpoint. So uh, it's just a guilt trip. All it is is psychological manipulation from an abuser. That's all it is. So that I have a quote here. Abusers, of course, don't see their gifts as tools for manipulation. They genuinely think they're being generous and don't expect anything back. But then when we resist their demands later on, they may complain about ingratitude, either directly to us or to others who pass the message on us. The guilt that comes from this is pretty hard to resist because we've been taught that the giver of a gift deserves to be honored. So we may grudgingly find ourselves falling for the manipulation unable to stop the gifts and thus the feeling of obligation to show gratitude by giving unto their demands at other times. Right? Unable to stop the gifts. We can't stop them from, well we could, but uh, we generally can't stop them from stealing from us and we can't stop them from providing the gifts, you know, the so-called benefits. So what I was thinking of here is an abusive spouse beating the living hell out of his, out of his wife and while he's doing it, he's screaming out how hard he works to provide such a nice lifestyle for the family, all right? right? As he's brutalizing her, and it can happen to you know, a man too, a man can be brutalized also. Uh, this is not saying that you know, both sexes can't be, or genders can't be abused. Uh, but all it is is blaming the victim, and then further manipulating them into feeling guilty for the abuse, that they are responsible for the abuse. So there's a reason why we talk about the Stockholm Syndrome and Battered Citizen Syndrome. And you see this constantly played out every time somebody is abused, well, pretty much every time someone is brutalized by the police, they blame the victim. They blame the victim. You should have just followed the law. You shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have done that. You should have just do what you were told. You shouldn't have worn that dress. You had it coming. You shouldn't have drank so much. You had it coming. You blame the victim. Sick psychological manipulation. And exactly how does calling the police or the fireman prove that a written instrument from over 200 years ago applied to me today? Where's the connection there? So I have a little thing here where you can imagine them bureaucrats trying to sell this idea. So, you know, hey, it seems that we have no evidence that a written instrument applies to anybody and creates obligations. What are we going to do? That's a good question there. Oh, I know. First, what we're going to do is we're going to steal lots of money from these plebes. That's what we're going to do. And we'll put, them, we'll put them in jail if they don't listen to us, okay? And then what we can do with that money, we can give them roads and we give them gifts. But, but keep this in mind. We can also hire more men with guns to get more money from these people. And then, if they ever call us or, or use our roads, there you go. Now it applies. That constitution didn't apply before, now applies because I got no choice but to use our roads. Oh, you ridiculous. Uh, I think that demonstrates the stupid logic and the psychological manipulation used by them. So let's go through the next section here. He really lays on, tries to lay on the guilt trip here. Have you ever attended a local, state, or federally fund, or federal funded celebration event, parade, or fireworks show? How the hell is going to a fireworks show proving the Constitution applies? Ever visit a city slash county slash state slash federal park? Oh, you mean the park that was taken over at, at gunpoint and people thrown off the land and killed and put on reservations? You mean, you, you talking about those? 
Did you ever go to a state school, which is compulsory? Do your kids go to a state school or even homeschooled? Well, you have to get permission to homeschool. Uh, there are rules slash laws that must be followed. Do you enjoy the protection of the U.S. military and National Guard from foreign invader? Do you park your vehicles in a red curb, no parking area, block a fire hydrant when it, whenever you go, want to, run stop signs whether safe or not, do you stop at red lights, why a red light, that's capitalized, don't know why, uh, even when it's safe to run it, travel at whatever speed you believe is safe, pass cars by going over the double, double yellow lines even when safe, do you have a passport? Oh man, what a bunch of trash. Well. Again, you can see it's mainly the same non sequiturs that he put in before. Uh, how does forcing people to send their children to political schools prove the Constitution applies to them just because they're physically in... It, it, it's presupposing if you force the kids into your schools, it's presupposing your Constitution already applies because they're physically in California. Uh, traveling in a safe manner is basically self-interest. Uh, that's why most of us do it. Safe interest, self-interest to protect myself and my family and it's also empathy because I don't want to hurt anybody else. Um, it's not because of a written instrument from over a hundred years ago. Um, okay, political laws, look. Political laws that are not redundant with our basic principles of right and wrong, of doing no harm, uh, you know, uh, are only, you know, so they're only comply with out of fear. So it's the mala prohibita, the ones, the rules that they create that are not consistent with do no harm that we have to be forced to comply with. And we only comply with them on the threat of jail. There is a prison system last time I checked, so I don't think I'm making that up. Uh, this was funny too. How does having a passport prove the California Constitution applies to somebody? That's a federal thing, so I don't see... That looks like a non sequitur to me, completely unrelated. Uh, having a passport, I don't see how that could prove a written instrument from 150 years ago could apply to someone today, it presupposes that the Constitution applied in the first place. So, uh, another non sequitur and begging the question. Uh, and here, traveling outside the geographic United States isn't permitted. You have to have permission. Try to travel without a passport out of, the, uh, out of North America, see what happens to you. Even if you do get out, try to get back. Uh, it's not allowed, you need permission. Uh, the men and women forcing us, called government, uh, don't allow us to travel freely. You have to do, you have to get permission. Passports are compulsory. You can say, well, you don't have to travel. Uh, it's such a stupid argument. That doesn't prove that your constitution and laws apply just because I'm physically in California, though. It has nothing to do with the argument. It has nothing to do with the question of whether there's evidence the constitution applies or not. It doesn't matter whether I can travel or not. It's irrelevant to the question. The question has to do with my physical location in the United States. This part of North America. Where's the evidence that just because I physically hear your constitution and code apply to me? There's nothing. Uh, you know, see, okay, so forcing people to pay you, it doesn't make written instruments apply. And that's why they can't ever produce any evidence to prove that their laws apply, because they're just men and women forcing us to pay them. Uh, and forcing us to get permission to travel freely doesn't make them apply retroactively, no matter how many times you repeat your argument. So, we're almost done here. There is much more, however, if you have not, uh, however, if you have not yet come to the conclusion that you may have given your consent to be under the authority of the local, state, and federal governments and laws that are established, I am positive more will not help. So that's because there is no consent. You either pay, you go to jail. Nobody consents. That is evidence directly contradictory to your position of consent. There is no consent. Zero. The facts are against you. Um, so that nullifies that. If someone here, you know, we get to say, if someone does not consent to the established legal authority of their physical location, say physical location, that circumstance does not stop the authority, men with guns, from exercising its authority over the people in their location through the means of that is ava it has available. And that is called a force continuum. They will use whatever violence and threats of violence are necessary to get you to comply. Now, those threats of violence, do they create an obligation on you? Do they prove that the Constitution and laws apply? No, because they're just men and women forcing us to pay them, and they're men and women forcing their will on us. They're just criminals. So, again, no evidence of consent. Uh, again, the, the means available, threats, duress, coercion, force continuum, prison system, do we need to... Uh, 
pretty well established. See, because that's all that's meant by the PR phrase, established legal authority of their physical location. Just men with guns willing to kill you to get compliance. All it is. Again, how does the fact that they want to, are willing to shoot me or put me in prison to get compliance, how does that prove a written instrument applies to me? It doesn't. It completely irrelevant. If you do not agree with a law slash code written by the authority, is that Zeus? Zeus? Odin? Jupiter? Uh, get the law slash code changed, but to deny or argue the authority does not have jurisdiction over your vehicle and because you registered that vehicle with the state and obligated yourself to following the laws of the city, county, and state makes for a very poor argument in my opinion. Well, this is a common straw man. Uh, it's not that I'm disagreeing with the text of the law. You'll notice I always say that the text of the law is completely irrelevant until we've proven that there's evidence or shown evidence that the Constitution laws apply in the first place. So the text is completely irrelevant. It's a common straw man. It, okay, so I don't care what the laws say. I only care for if you have evidence proven they apply. That's it. Not that you have men with guns to get my compliance because that doesn't prove anything. That just proves you're a crook. You're making my case for me. Uh, and also, the vehicle registration that he mentions, that is compulsory. You do it, you go to jail. It's not proof a magical written instrument applies in the first place. Uh, it's only proof that somebody prefers not to die on the street. They'd rather comply than die. That's all it means. Uh, now he, I guess he's trying to get educated. He make him sound educated here. It, it, I don't think it, it bodes well. Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Hobbes, Locke, Montesquieu, Hayek, Hume, Raz, Wolf, and you have all struggled with what it all means. No, you're criminals. I'm not struggling with that. You're criminals. Uh, do we have an obligation to obey the laws established by legal authorities? No. No, absolutely not. There's no evidence. We only comply because we don't think it's a good day to die today. So uh, there is no obligation to pay them. Um, so sum up, uh, we debunked another one of these bureaucrats and their silly little fallacious justifications because it comes down to trying to justify a double standard that is okay to lie, steal, kill, and cheat other people for no other reason than you call yourself a government. But if you disagree with my analysis here, you're more than welcome to call into a live broadcast, especially if you think there's evidence proving that the constitutions apply to me or anyone else just because we're physically in California, do what this bureaucrat could not do. Uh, again, my name is Mark Stevens. This has been debunking yet another load of bureaucratic nonsense here on the No State Project. Again, uh, the website, markstevens.net.